A hominin, that's hominin without an E at the end, is an animal that is among us, Homo sapiens, or our ancestors and their various descendants going back up to and not including the point where the last ancestor that was ancestral to both chimps and us existed. This takes us back an unclear amount of time, ranging from some 7 to 5 million years ago. The fossil record is filled out to a rather limited extent for much of hominin history, and this goes all the more so for the earliest periods of some 7 to 4.2 million years ago, from when only three species are known. Stage 1 of hominin evolution, the pre-Australopithecines. The oldest genus argued to be a hominin is Aurorin. As yet, the genus Aurorin is composed of just one species, Aurorin tugenensis, whose fossils range from 6.1 to 5.7 million years ago. Tugan of Tugenensis is the name of the language and the people whose language uh, Rorin's name comes from. The fossil itself was found in the Tugan Hills of Kenya. The Tugan people are of the Kalenjin group, and to the 200,000 human beings that speak the language, and now to us to an extent, Aurorin means original man, which gets to what its discoverer fancied it to be. Aurorin shows signs of possibly being bipedal, though like all of our known early ancestral pool, and in fact more so than most that came later, Aurorin was well adapted for living in trees. Then came the Artipithecines. The first of the two known species of this genus is Artipithecus cadaba, of whom we've only some teeth as well as some bits of the skeleton. The fossils come from some time between 5.77 and 5.54 million years ago. Similar looking to the other known Artipithecus, Artipithecus ramidus, it was initially subsumed as one of that species, but it eventually gained its own spot on the species list based on the smallness of its teeth when contrasted to ramidus. Between Kadaba and ramidus is a gap of over a million years, but 4.4 million years ago ramidus is around. Ramidus is argued to be a descendant of Kadaba. It was capable of bipedalism, though it may well not have been able to maintain its bipedality for anything more than brief spurts, and it's thought that when walking, it would often do so in some form of palm walking mixed with bipedality. But Raminus's leaping ability, along with their grasping toe, rendered it real comfortable in the trees. Raminus's brain is rather small, slightly smaller than Bonobo and Chimp brains, coming in at 300-350 cubic centimeters. And unlike many later hominin species, the males and females are similarly sized. The next stage in hominin evolution is stage 2, the Australopithecines. This second stage includes more than the Australopithecines, arguably, but because most of the species of this stage are Australopithecines, and in fact according to some, all of them are, I've labeled this stage after them. The species of this second stage are small, relative to almost all the later homos, but they mark a step up in brain size from the Artipithecines, bringing our lineage into the same territory as chimps when it comes to our brain size. The oldest known Australopithecine is Australopithecine anamensis of 4.2 to 3.8 million years ago. Anamensis, like all Australopithecines, when contrasted to later Homo, was small-brained and had large teeth. Anamensis's brain size isn't known exactly, as we've yet to discover a full skull to more definitely gauge it. But using the one upper cranial fossil found thus far, we get a size of 365 to 370 cubic centimeters, smaller than later Australopithecines, but larger than Artipithecus, its predecessor. Like Homo, and like its fellow Australopithecines, it utilized bipedalism in its lifeway. This earliest Australopithecine is known from Kenya and Ethiopia of East Africa. In fact, the earliest known Australopithecines in general are known from East Africa before they take a South African turn. Overlapping with the end of Anamensis's known flicker of existence from East Africa and may well having evolved from Anamensis is the next known Australopithecine, Australopithecus afarensis. They're known to have been around from 3.9 to 2.9 million years ago, though a more expansive span of time is of course possible. Averaging a 445 cubic centimeter brain based off the adult fossils as yet recovered, this species shows a significant jump in brain size from the limited evidence we have of the size of Anamensis's brain. The largest brain Afarensis fossil 
comes in at around 520 cubic centimeters. The next Australopithecine may or may not be its own species. Australopithecus deirimida is claimed to be another East African species who ranged from 3.5 to 3.3 million years ago, which overlaps entirely with Afarensis. It's known from three partial cheekbones, which show, in contrast to Afarensis, smaller cheek teeth and forward-facing cheekbones. However, the overlap in time and location with Afarensis, along with the dearth of fossils found, has some believing that these are just somewhat unique Afarensises. Also from 3.5 million years ago comes the only known evidence for Australopithecines in Central Africa. From three jaw bones, along with a lone premolar, some would have it that this is evidence of a different Central African hominin, Australopithecus berelgazali. Very few adopt this line of thinking though, and instead would have it that these are once again Afarensis, though this time, and only this time for the time being, in Central Africa. Next, we move to South Africa for the first South African hominin, Australopithecus africanus, who lived from 3.3 million years ago, or slightly earlier still, up to around 2 million years ago. This first known South African hominin clocks in with a brain size usually ranging from 420 to 520 cubic centimeters. Now jumping back to East Africa, for a brief window of 2.6 to 2.5 million years ago, we have Australopithecus gari with a 450 cubic centimeter brain. And to bring the Australopithecine story to a close, we have Sediba, who is known from only one partial skeleton of a juvenile of the species. This South African Australopithecine comes from 1.98 million years ago, marking the latest date for the existence of Australopithecines. Jumping back a million and a half years, from 3.5 to about 3.3 million years ago, we have what appears to be another genus of hominin in the fossil record. The genus of Kenyanthropus, who is set apart by its very flat face. Some consider this fossil an Australopithecine, but many don't. And Australopithecine itself is a rather weak category, as categories go, as it isn't based on natural evolutionary groupings and is rather a non-natural practical grouping of these early similar-sized hominins. As we hopefully move to a more evolutionary-based model, it may well be that Kenyanthropus will be even more accepted as its own genus and the existing Australopithecines will require some splitting up into multiple genera themselves. Only one species of the genus Kenyanthropus is known, that of Platyops. Kenyanthropus platyops is known from East Africa, from Kenya, and while their brain size is assumed to be similar to the Australopithecines, no direct measure can be made with the current fossils. Platyops' unique face also brings it into arguments that a later hominin we'll see, stage 3's Homo rudolfensis, whose face Platyops' resembles, should perhaps be included in this Kenyanthropus genus as well. Next, and still in stage 2, we have the genus of Paranthropus. As with Kenyanthropus, there are those who have it that Paranthropus is Australopithecus, only the robust version. So you'll often hear these guys referred to as robust Australopithecines. As you may have gleaned, these three species are robust in some ways, and the robustness of their jaws is the main grounds for their distinction into a new genus. Those who would have them as Australopithecines argue that the robustness of their jaws merely reflects adaptations to different diets and environments than the other relatively gracile Australopithecines. In this view, instead of the story of Paranthropus being an evolution from an initial robust species to other robust species, each one of these three robust species would have evolved independently from different parent populations of Australopithecines. The earliest Paranthropus comes from East Africa, from Ethiopia and Kenya, and spans the range of 2.7 to 2.3 million years ago. The one skull we have of this Paranthropus ethiopicus gives a brain size of 410 cubic centimeters. If Paranthropus is indeed its own genus, then Ethiopicus was ancestral to the next and overlapping for 200,000 years, Paranthropus boise. Boise was also of East Africa, and of the three known robust species, Boise's skull is the most robust of them all. Boise ranges from 2.5 to 2.15 million years ago, and their brains come in at about 450 to 550 cubic centimeters. The last of these robust species is the species which initially got the genus of Paranthropus going, and being the first robust early hominin to be discovered, 
it trademarked, if you will, the species name Robustus. Unlike the other two robust species, Paranthropus robustus hails from South Africa and lasted far later into the future. It ranged from 2.27 million years ago up to just 870,000 years ago. In the few measured cases, no pun intended, the brain size comes in around 460 cubic centimeters. With Australopithecus, Canianthropus, and Paranthropus contended with, that brings us to stage 3, Homo. This third stage is marked by the genus to which we belong, Homo. Aside from three or four exceptions that I know of, though there may well be more, but either way, generally speaking, species of Homo are significantly larger in body and brain than the earlier Australopithecines. Time-wise, stages 2 and 3 overlap some, though stage 2 Australopithecines started 1.4 million years prior to stage 3, and while stage 2 came to a close about 2 million years ago, stage 3 is ongoing through the one remaining Homo, us. Not all Homo species are going to be included in the following outline. The oldest Homo fossil comes from 2.8 million years ago, and comes from Ethiopia. This oldest fossil Homo includes just the jaw and some teeth, and as yet remains unclassified as a species, but it has the delightful name of LD350-1. The next oldest Homo species is Homo habilis, whose range included both East and South Africa. It's debated whether Homo habilis was more proficient bipedally than the Australopithecines that preceded them, and these hominins may well have still been using trees in their lifeway. Homo habilis ranged from 2.35 million years ago, or a little earlier, up to 1.65 million years ago. They scavenge meat and are associated with tools which used to be thought the earliest around, the so-called Oldowan tradition. But it now seems that still simpler tools appeared earlier than them, and that our recorded tools likely pre-existed the genus Homo. Habilis's brain size ranged significantly from 500 to 900 cubic centimeters, and averaged about 600 cubic centimeters. While Habilis was still around, around 2 million years ago, and possibly significantly earlier, a larger, and likely larger brained, Homo species makes an appearance, Homo rudolfensis. The baits surround fossils that might take the species up to 1.65 to 1.55 million years ago. The next Homo species is Homo ergaster, which might not exist, but if it did, lasted roughly from 1.7 to 1.4 million years ago. Homo ergaster marks a significant increase in hominin size and is likely ancestral to Homo erectus if you consider the two different species. Some do and some don't. Morphological arguments distinguishing the two have been made and differences in tool use are provided as evidence as well to suggest that the two are different species. Ergaster is mostly known from Kenya, though they existed in both East and Southern Africa, and they're associated with tools that make the transition from the Oldowan tradition to the Acheulean tradition across time, but not to the level of sophistication in the Acheulean technology that the Asian Erectus got up to. Though some Ergaster brains are smaller, most range from 600 to 910 cubic centimeters. Along with the step up in brain size was a step up in body size as well. From a world of Australopithecines, which tended to weigh between 60 and 106 pounds, Ergasters generally range between 115 and 139 pounds. Homo erectus, or Asian Homo erectus, if you consider Ergaster erectus, either way, this alleged new species, which followed, lasted far longer and migrated significantly as well, with the last one dying only 110,000 years ago in the form of Java Man. It's from Ergaster, however, that the rest of the story towards us is thought to have unfolded. Thought to have come from Ergaster, or African Erectus, is Homo heidelbergensis of 800,000 to 300,000 years ago. Largely, and arguably solely, confined to Europe, this species' brain generally ranged from 727 to 1,231 cubic centimeters, with the average starting off lower and getting higher across time in the fossil record. Around 600,000 years ago, though take this number rather lightly, the lineage that led to Homo sapiens and the lineage that led to Neanderthals split off, likely descending from Homo heidelbergensis. Around 240,000 years ago, Homo neanderthalensis is in on the scene. Neanderthalensis lived in both Europe and West Asia and has a stout body adapted to the cold. They were bigger brained than humans on average, and some interbreeding occurred between us and them, leaving non-African Homo sapiens 
with some 1-4% to of their DNA from Neanderthals. The Neanderthals lasted until 28,000 years ago. Shortly after the appearance of Neanderthalensis, Homo sapiens appeared roughly 200,000 years ago, though some have this number pushed back 100,000 years to 300,000 years ago. My next video will take a look at our species and our early history, so I'm going to leave sapiens alone for now, and move on to shortly after our appearance, 190,000 years ago, when a seeming descendant of Homo erectus is known from the island of Flores. This Homo floresiensis was tiny, and had a tiny brain to go along with it. If not for the age and some Homo-like anatomy, you might have guessed that this was an Australopithecine from its dimensions. Some argue against the idea that they're descended from Erectus, and instead fancy them pathological sapiens of some sort. They lasted until 50,000 years ago before going bye-bye. Finally, we have the Denisovans of 40,000 year ago Siberia. These seem to be of the lineage that made the Neanderthals having split off sometime after our ancestors did.